I'm Michael. I'm Nicholas. And we are from Scotland. Aye, big love from Scotland. Okay, aye, the new. Okay, aye. Sign up for Church Millet in the day. Church Militant Talk TV. Aye. aye. <laughs> the second annual churchmilitant.tv Retreat at Sea is coming up in January. This year's theme is about the Catholic Restoration and what you can do to get involved. Click the link for more details. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. So far in the battle between secular humanistic progressive liberal modernism and the Catholic Church, the Church, we are very sorry to have to repeat, has come up on the short end of that stick. The reason we have to identify the enemy with such a long string of adjectives is because this enemy, this beast, has all sorts of tentacles that have inserted themselves deeply into every area of life from the courts, to the movie houses, to the legislatures, to the classrooms, to the hospitals, to social philosophies and political philosophies, to economics, and yes, even into the houses of faith, including many areas in the Catholic Church. The hallmark of secular, humanistic, progressive, liberal modernism is that it seeks an overthrow of God and the true religion, and it uses all areas of life to achieve this end. And all these various areas overlap considerably. When St. Pope Pius X condemned the error of modernism in 1907, he called it the synthesis of all heresies, and that is a very fit description, because it synthesizes a whole array of heresies from earlier days in the history of the Church. It can therefore be expressed in a whole multitude of areas of human life, as stated above. But the key components of this social and theological heresy are what we need to identify before we can even begin to attack the tentacles in each area of human experience. At the end of the day, it is a rebellion against authority, specifically the authority of Almighty God expressed through His Holy Catholic Church. And since God, vis-a-vis -vis the Church, is the ultimate enemy that secular, humanistic, progressive, liberal modernism seeks to destroy, the Church herself must come to terms with this reality and muster her forces. But the conundrum is this. So many members of the Church, most especially leaders, have been corrupted themselves that they have fallen prey to this enemy without even realizing it. In the West, for example, so many Catholic bishops have bought into the false notion of a pluralistic society's claim to competing subjective truths that they are powerless, the bishops, to see the damage that such a political and social philosophical construct can do to the culture. Societies are not made stronger by division, they are weakened. Nations do not profit from a foggy notion of diversity, they are made weaker when that diversity allows for varying approaches to absolute truth, including its complete dismissal and ignoring. Now the rest of society is quite capable of falling into the pit of hell, but when leaders in the church pave the way for this by drinking the poison offered by the very enemy they are supposed to recognize and attack, then something has gone very wrong and wayward. The only force in the world capable of attacking and beating back the secular, humanistic, progressive, liberal, modernist beast is the Catholic Church. Nothing else and no one else. Even those who dimly see the damage this beast has and is causing in certain areas of life. It's fine for the church to have all allies in fighting against the beast among, for example, we'll say political conservatives or even social conservatives. But when those same people agree with the propaganda of the beast in other areas, like theology or certain moral issues, then they are weak allies at best and still operating under the influence of the beast. The church, meaning her leaders, have got to stand up and say it like it is. They need to stand up and announce to the world that a new day has come in the battle against the beast, and that day is the day where we announce that this is a spiritual war, that the beast is at the service of the diabolical, that anything that is not in conformity with Catholic truth will eventually fall prey to the beast because only Catholic truth is guaranteed divine truth and only the divine can vanquish the diabolical. So the church must first clean house 
to make herself an even more effective fighting force against the beast. Weak bishops, those who have given in, must repent, resign, or both. In their place must emerge strong men, strong fathers, who will not sit at dinner tables with the enemy, but rather reach across and plunge a dagger into the beast's neck, the beast that threatens to devour their children, as any good father would do. Priests and religious who have consorted with the beast must be expunged from the ranks. They have offered profane sacrifice after profane sacrifice to the beast in their errant preaching, their lack of faithful instruction, their immoral lives, and their perverted, twisted intellects. They have corrupted the young minds in their charge by their intellectual poison and poor example, thus setting the stage for their evil and wickedness to continue and survive long after they themselves have been damned. The laity, who to be sure have enjoyed the pleasures of indulging our senses and dulling our thoughts, must at last be called back to a faithful stance, have the authentic faith preached to us, and told to live a life of sacrifice on the ramparts of fortress Catholicism. Orthodoxy must be resurrected and faithfulness at last restored. If not, we will continue to see our children, our friends, our family devoured by this beast, for this is his sole reason for being to devour the sons of God. The bishops who have consorted with this enemy need to wake up and realize what they have allowed to happen and that they will face the judgment of Christ, the fierce, if they do not change now. 107 human beings die every minute all around the world. They exit earth never to return again. 107 every minute. 6,500 every hour. 155,000 every day, day after day. How many of them plunge into hell because they ignored the impulse planted in them by God to seek Him, but were never encouraged to follow that impulse by the very men put on this earth to encourage them to do so? Christ did not intend for His church to fail. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. The Restoration Retreat, the second annual Retreat at Sea from churchmilitant.tv. We invite you to set sail with us this January the 12th for a seven-day retreat at sea to discuss the who, what, where, when, and why of what has gone wrong in the church for the past 50 years. The idea of a Catholic restoration is an immensely dense topic and will undoubtedly take a week's worth of conferences to truly understand. There are many questions circling the minds of faithful Catholics. Why have all my children left the faith? How have I become the crazy religious person in my family? What can I do to restore the faith? How can I get others involved? How did we get here and where are we going? All that and more will be on this year's Restoration Retreat from churchmilitant.tv. Retreatants will be afforded the opportunity for a true spiritual escape from emails, ringing phones, and noisy neighbors. All the rigors of the worldly life will be paused for a week of daily mass, confession, exposition, benediction, Eucharistic procession, and the Holy Rosary. All in addition to the daily conferences, terrific weather, and delicious meals with great Catholic conversation. Please click the link and we'll see you in January.